at some point we are going to have to do a whole show about how good this show sounds. We do the show live now every Friday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Uh, I don't know. I'm Producer Dave, and you can find me on Grinder. You can find me on Twitter, if it's still there, at T-H-E underscore councilman. Um, you can also find me creeping up on your house, maybe popping a little imminent domain and building an event for my BART station in your backyard. An event for a BART station in my backyard? Yeah, they need to vent like you know the air and stuff because it's you know underground and stuff and it smells down there. So they got to vent it somewhere. So we're gonna use your backyard. Be fantastic if I opened the sliding glass door here and just went down some stairs and fucking the train took me to the East Bay. Right? Wouldn't that be fabulous? Um, but first we're gonna have to buy your property and completely demolish the house. So sorry about that. But we're gonna give you fair market value. Well, it's not really my house, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. But I, I would um, have. To, how are you doing? I would have to disassemble everything in the studio here. Oh, 
That'd be a pain in the ass. My God, yeah, there's so much stuff here now. After all that work, too. Um, well, hopefully that won't happen. I'm, I'm not coming for your house, I promise. VTA <laughs> might, but I won't. Um, anyway, how are you doing, Bruce, Dave? Good, good. Been in, uh, been an eventful, busy week. Uh, just real quick, shout out to the person who made a rather large donation to this project today over Venmo and did so anonymously. I appreciate that. Oh, thanks very much. We appreciate all of our donors, all of our sponsors, all of our friends. Um, all of our subscribers on the Twitch. Um, we really appreciate each and every one of you because we do this as a labor of love, um, but there are costs involved. Uh, and we really appreciate you uh, enabling us to do this and uh, bring this wonderful show down ballot to you so we can talk about all that's good in local news and local derp and perhaps give folks from outside of our region a little glimpse into what makes it so unique and darned interesting. Yep, you know it's been a while too since we've gone uh, to somebody else's uh, neighborhood to do some uh, to do some down ballot. So maybe next week or the week after, we'll pick another metro area, take a look at their news. I think that'd be a fancy idea. Let's let's uh, let's we'll, and we'll take suggestions by the way in the chat. So if, if there's anyone who wants to shout out their their metro area, or we'll, we'll happily take a look. Or if you're listening to the podcast or whatever, you can also uh, make suggestions in Discord or email me or anything like that. And uh, you suggestions go. where people are would offer to help us find uh, news stories, those move to the front of the line. Yeah, fa- absolutely. If you include links to actual news stories um, and little blurbs, that would be really helpful. That way we can sort of judge, right, in advance. We don't have to do our own research. Because um, we, if anything, we're just lazy and we don't like to do that. Yeah, we that's want you to do the work it. for us. Yeah, that's mostly. Um, mostly. <laughs> that's Friday night. We're already, getting, on, we're already getting suggestions to do Beverly Hills. We could do Los Angeles metro area, I suppose. Yeah, we could do like West Hollywood or Beverly Hills. There's, there's there's actually a few little mini metro areas in LA. I don't know that they each have their own like news network, but um, they certainly have uh, stories. We'll, we'll 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 scour KTLA for some Beverly Hills stories. Um, anyway, yeah, what do we have we, for leading off this week? Well, um, y'all might recall, uh, maybe month, two months ago, I forget honestly how long ago this was. Uh, we had the rather random story um caught on video a adult dancer i guess in a bikini getting out of a fire truck out in front of the pink poodle which is one of our premier uh, gentlemen's clubs here in san jose um and walking into the club uh really no context at all for what was going on but uh apparently the fire department at least has learned more and they're about to you know, bring down the pain but there's still a little bit of squishy on the details so here's nbc bay area with a report Okay, so what exactly was that bikini-clad woman doing climbing out of the fire truck? It has been five months since we first showed you the video Sorry, of a five woman months. walking into the Pink Poodle strip club after exiting a San Jose fire truck. Tonight, an update, albeit a puzzling one. NBC Barrier's Damien Trujillo has been on the story since the beginning, and he lays out exactly what the city is and is not saying. I stood here five months ago as an angry mayor, Sam Licardo, blasted the video. Today we've learned the city will take action as a result, but they're not saying what exactly that action will be. The video shows a woman in a bikini stepping out of San Jose Fire Engine 4 and walking into the Pink Poodle Club on Bascom Avenue. After we brought the video to the attention of then-Mayor Sam Licardo, the fire department launched an investigation. And today, five months later, an answer. In a statement, the city said, The investigation has been concluded. We are in the process of taking appropriate action based on what was discovered during the course of the investigation and will provide more information as it is appropriate to do so. In October, former Mayor Sam Licardo said that if any firefighter acted inappropriately, then, quote, heads must roll. Today, we asked the new mayor, Matt Mahan, for comment. He issued a statement saying, Like all of our residents, I was shocked when I saw the video and have to believe the investigation will show conduct well below the high standard the women and men of San Jose Fire hold themselves to every day. I have the utmost confidence Fire Chief Sapien will conduct a thorough review of what happened and take appropriate action once that work is done. According to dispatch records obtained by NBC Bay Area in November, there was never a call for service at the Pink Poodle that night, but at 9.06 p.m., GPS data shows engine 4 stopped in front of the business. The engine then appears to circle the block before returning four minutes later at 9.10. Then at 9.14 p.m., the GPS pings two miles away, showing engine 4 stopped in front of AJ's bikini bar. GPS data shows the engine was there for about four minutes. The city says it will release what it can in a final report 
in the coming days. In San Jose, Damien Trujillo, NBC Bay Area News. So, nothing. Yeah, really, a big nothing burger other than they've reached a conclusion and heads are going to roll. That pretty, that's pretty much what that means is we can't talk about it because it's, it's an HR issue, right? We're going we're gonna to put some people on leave or we're going to fire some people. Um, my guess, bachelor party, some sort of bachelor party gone wrong, right? Like, let's, you know, let, uh, let's give the kid a, the night of his life, you know, we'll <laughs> take him out in the fire truck and get him a stripper at Pink Poodle to come in and then we'll get someone at AJ's, the bikini bar to come and give him a little dance, right? Um, and thought they, I don't know why, but thought they could get away with it. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's my best guess. I really can't explain this other than that. I um, want it to be unless, something way more mundane, like, that was our friend and we were giving her a ride to work. Yeah, right. Or, <laughs> or even like I was hoping for some sort of medical, not emergency, right? Or something like, you know, she was having a, a heart palpitations or something, right? And they were resuscitating her right? or she was resuscitating them. Um, but uh, yeah, reciprocity is, is so fantastic. Well, we'll, we'll I mean, we will find out eventually what went down. Um, it's just I. this is kind of a frustrating story because they can't really tell us everything yet, right? So why even bother issuing a statement or why bother telling us that the investigation is concluded? Unless, of course, someone leaked that the investigation was concluded and so the news is calling, you have to issue some sort of statement, right? That's probably what happened. And I do love Mayor uh, Mayor Zuck's statement um, leading with women and men of the San Jose Fire, right? Very, very subtle, but um, very much on point. Good good branding. I say, like, uh, leave, leave, leave the working girl alone. I mean, my God. I mean, for, as far as I, I don't, I, mean, I can't think of anything that would impugn her or, or you know, make her the culprit in this situation. I really can't think of any any situation where she'd be to blame for this. Um, so we we shall see what comes out. I just of hope it. it's we'll, something. I just really hope it's something mundane. Like that's one of the firefighters' sisters, and she just needed a ride. Right. <laughs> like I. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope it's just Brian, something totally fucking mundane and uninteresting. Brian, my car broke down and I don't have money for an Uber. And I'm already in my bikini and no one will pick me up. Taxis won't pick me up. Oh, man. Uh, well, well, let's move on to winners and losers here. Um, this story, I've been having I've been having a lot of fun on Twitter going after venture capitalists. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of, this is the Silicon Valley Bank. Um, it's not really a bank that the councilman and I would tend to use for our checking accounts. Um, not really that a lot, kind of, a lot bank. of venture money in there. A lot of yeah. some small businesses, mostly startups though would be, might be using this bank, but a lot, a lot of them. Yes. Not just, a, it was, I just love, I just love watching libertarians freak out about this stuff be like the government better give everybody back every dime of their money and it's like aren't you a libertarian <laughs> anyway here's the, here's the hit from abc7 bay area on silicon valley bank being uh i guess seized by the fdic which is great i guess and we are back now with that breaking news out of the South Bay involving Silicon Valley Bank. California regulators have just shut it down in what's become the largest failure since financial since the financial crisis. Back in 2008, of course, ABC7 News anchor Karina Nova live for us in the newsroom following this huge story. Karina, what are we learning? Uh, Julie and Kristen, this is obviously very complicated and will have a big impact on many businesses and people. ABC 7 News was at the Menlo Park location this morning where upset customers were lined up trying to get answers. So how did this happen? Basically, a lot of tech companies have their money in Silicon Valley Bank. Because of the hit many tech companies have taken in the stock market, many are now taking their cash reserves out of banks. SVB also had some other assets lose value, which caused even more strain on their bottom line. And then this week, others started pulling their cash out, causing a run on the bank. Talking, we're probably talking tens of thousands of clients. And, you know, we're talking CFOs and CEOs of, of startups that need to pay their people, that need to invest in technology, that won't be able to scale out their businesses uh, or to last through what could potentially become uh, a recession. And so this this cash is actually critical for any startup. Cash is really a lifeline. And so this bodes very badly for the region's small businesses. 
It's important to know that Silicon Valley Bank was not a small bank. It's the 16th largest bank in the country, holding $210 billion in assets. And there were estimated to be up to 6,500 people working for the bank. So this will have a big impact. We are gathering new details and we'll bring you much more on this breaking news throughout the day. Live in the newsroom, Karina Nova, ABC7 News. All right. Thank you so much, Karina. This is like... Yeah, mo- like any regular person doesn't have to worry about this because their their money is after I see insured. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, and like I don't think a lot of banks like payroll, like the account they run out for their payroll for like or a lot of small businesses payroll accounts are going to be have over two hundred fifty grand in them. Um, mm-hmm. I think businesses probably have some kind of insurance also that helps with stuff like this. I guess it'd be more sure. like medium and larger businesses, though. I would assume small businesses might might opt out of that kind of insurance because they're like, "What do you mean my bank's going to fail?" <clears throat> right. But the, and, the, and what most, they left out most, is that there's a lot of venture money in there, like a lot of VC money yeah. in that bank. Well, two hundred ten billion dollars. I mean, that's that's a crap ton of money. That's not just the mom stuff. That's you know, mom and pops investment money, right? Um, but that's really who's getting screwed here, right? Like those those big VC investors. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big hit to them, and it's it sucks. Hopefully, it's not their entire nest egg in this one bank. They're more than likely diversified enough where it's like, okay, it sucks, but it's not going to kill them, and they'll they'll be back. It's really those mom and pops who are reliant on the money. I mean, they probably don't even know that their money is invested or put into this bank, right? And they don't realize yet that it's going to impact them until the ripple effect hits right um and the people that they've invested with who invest in this bank you know get hit right and where does that hit um you know where, where does that hit made whole so it's more likely on the backs of those mom and pops so that's that's the only down that the that was the unfortunately the biggest losers in this entire thing um but yeah it is so much fun to see see venture capitalists running for cover and i i, I picture them like a run on the bank you know a bunch of like a uh, turtlenecked blonde blown out just um you know vcs at the window you know frothing it up <laughs> frosting it up i, I, I just breath. i just hope fucking peter Thiel had a bunch of money in this bank i mm, just really mm. hope that peter Thiel had a bunch of money in this bank this was absolutely that kind of bank this was like a bank that um like they wanted to also to be everywhere and do all the things they would sponsor all the events right they would sponsor the marathons and the the 5ks and the the charity balls right um they wanted very much wanted to be players they, they donated they were in th- their, uh, to political campaigns too um so uh it's even funnier for that right like they're just so caught up in the silicon in being silicon valley that they forgot they're actually a bank <laughs> and they need to actually do they, they have to do finance oh this is this is i mean i don't know like I, I don't know i guess you love to see it fuck it i mean like yeah i mean i'm not crying i'm absolutely not crying I, I again i feel bad for any small businesses that are impacted but i'm definitely not crying for the people behind the bank um especially some of the employees who I know who are kind of, they fit the mold, like <laughs> they're the arrogant Silicon Valley types. So good for them. I don't feel sorry for a uh, Mark Andreessen. Um, no. not, not in the least, <laughs> not, not very much at all, nor Peter Thiel. Yeah. Any um, of the venture people you see any, anytime you see a venture person, you look at their fucking, you look at their Twitter account and it's all such and such a capital firm. And then they posted about this. What you need to post in their replies on Twitter is crabs dancing. Because the crab dance gift is for just such a thing. Eh, mom and pop businesses, dun, 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 I, I, and it's not like mom and pops are gonna, but it's gonna be like small, like smaller startups that might have some problems like around mm-hmm. this. Um, mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I think like most, even like small startups have their money in several places. They don't just put all their money in one bank account. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, I, I, I would imagine. I would hope so, right? Um, but you never know. And sometimes it. You know, startups, they also, you know, it, you have to, you have no idea how much trust there is with your financial people, right? And what kind of strings you're allowing them to pull and where the money is sometimes. So who knows if they're being a little reckless um, and the people on top at, at the top aren't keeping an eye on the shop, you know, things could get bad without you even knowing it. Well, this next story could have gone and get your shit together. Um, yeah, right. I, I, most of them actually, I was trying to, de- I was debating which one to put in. <laughs> get your shit together tonight this next one is uh, san francisco the city or county probably both to pay a former medical examiner a half a million dollars in a public defender autopsy scandal let's see what's going on here 
It's very down ballot. It's a big number, close to a half a million dollars. Our investigative unit has learned that's how much the city of San Francisco will be paying a former top official with the chief medical examiner's office for wrongful termination. That former official claims that he was fired for refusing to alter the autopsy report of public defender Jeff Adachi back in 2019. NBC Barry's investigative reporter Jackson Vanderbecken has more. I thought I was doing the right thing. Um, but instead, I was fired. When public defender Jeff Adachi died back in 2019, Christopher Weirich was the operations manager here at the office of the chief medical examiner. Weirich oversaw the investigation into Adachi's death, a case that police initially considered suspicious. Adachi was found unconscious in a North Beach apartment. He was only 59. Ultimately, the death was blamed on the toxic effects of cocaine and alcohol on his already diseased heart. But Weirich says the way the autopsy report was handled cost him his job. So he sued the city. While he wouldn't be interviewed for this story, in this video his attorneys posted on the internet and in this lawsuit, Weirich says the day of the autopsy report was set to be released, he got a visit from then city administrator Naomi Kelly. She wanted to review the entire investigative autopsy report and she went line by line and it was there were some changes that she suggested they said no. In litigation filings his attorneys say the changes involved removing references to cocaine in Adachi's system and the female companion he was with before he died. The city countered in its response that Kelly was simply asking innocuous questions about cocaine and never brought up the companion. The city says Weirich was fired months later for mishandling highly confidential personnel documents. Weirich says that's nonsense. I was fired because I told Miss Kelly no, that I wouldn't falsify Mr. Adachi's autopsy report. The city initially called Weirich's legal claims complete fiction. But we've learned it has now agreed to pay Weirich nearly a half a million dollars to settle his suit. The city attorney told us it considers that an appropriate resolution, given the inherent costs of continued litigation. The Board of Supervisors still has to approve the tentative deal. We reached out to former city administrator Kelly, but she didn't get back to us. Jackson Vanderbecken, NBC, Bay Area News. Why would she? She might be in some trouble now, too. Like, we reached yeah. out to this person and they wouldn't incriminate themselves. Imagine that, right? <laughs> well, it's, fu it's funny how often people do call back the press and do you know, offer quotes or do allow themselves to get cornered when they don't really have to. It's not, it's an obligation. And you're frankly going to look better if, if they say, well, we couldn't reach them for comment or they didn't respond or whatever. Right. Then if you respond and I mean, no matter what you say in this, at this stage, you're just not going to sound great. So, uh, probably better that way. <laughs> she didn't comment. Yeah. It, uh, I would folks will remember that. this story from, yeah, right. Folks will remember this story from a few years ago. We covered Jeff Adachi's passing. Um, it was under very not suspicious circumstances, just, you know, lewd and somewhat, somewhat lewd circumstances. Um, so, uh, apparently, uh, the city is trying their best to, you know, smooth things over, maybe candy coat, um, the situation a little bit, um, understandable because the guy had a very good reputation. Um, so, it, you know, I can, you can understand why they're trying to protect it and protect their reputation as a city. Um, but yeah, this is, this is not, um, this is not bode well. Um, uh, and San Francisco already has enough scandal inter internally as it is public works, other departments. So now the medical examiner, <laughs> where will it end? You're, so, you're right. It should have gone under get your shit together. That could have, and this could too. Last week we covered uh, the Oakland, apparently Oakland city, <clears throat> like city computers, basically the city of Oakland's computers, computer system had been hacked, uh, broken into hacked is maybe a bad word, but we'll, uh, had been broken into, uh, they were result a, they were a victim of cyber crime. A cyber attack is what the, uh, the news phrase phrases it as, or cyber theft so apparently whoever uh, did this is releasing personal information of city employees. That's fucking not Ooh. great. Fuck these people. This isn't not some, cool. this isn't some Robin hood shit here. You're going to, uh, -uh. <laughs> whoever they are, this is, uh, you're not Rob. You're not going after the, you're not going after the big guy. You're going after the little guy. That's not ethical. You use right. your powers for good. Whoever the fuck you are. 
Cuffed by hackers, the city of Oakland tonight acknowledging that cyber thieves have started releasing the personal information of some city workers. It read to me like sort of their last ditch effort to try to get Oakland to pay something so that they can recoup the costs of their operation. Social security numbers, driver's licenses, and other information. All I like how they had that guy back there. They tried to make, they're like, could you make your computer look a little more computer hackery, please? Yeah. Computer. <laughs> In a ransomware Matrix attack. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebeck. And I'm Julie Hayner. The cyber attack has crippled the city systems and compromised private data. KTVU's Janet Katsuyama spoke with a cybersecurity expert about the hacker group and the danger facing the city and citizens. Jana. Julie and Mike, cybersecurity experts recommend never paying ransom to some of these hacker groups, but this group already has started posting information on their website, which today had more than 1,100 views. And many people here in Oakland are very concerned that... But their infosec's pretty bad if they you know how many views their website had. Might be exposed mm -hmm. Unless they're bragging about it. <laughs> 1100 ain't much. I've had more than that in my Twitch channel once before. By a hacker group called Play. The mayor declined to talk about the issue, and the city administrator's office was dark Monday afternoon. Instead, a message was posted on the city's website acknowledging the ransomware attack and warning about a network outage. The hacker group ramped up the stakes over the weekend. It looks like they have ties to some pretty established ransomware groups like Conti, which was a big one as recently as last year. Cooper Quinton is seen senior technologist with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. He was able to access parts of Play's hacker code from an online cybersecurity page. The hacker group's website posted a statement declaring they have access to personal confidential data, financial information, IDs, passports, employee information, and human rights violation information. The website also gives a link to download part of the stolen data, which we've obscured, and the group issued a threat saying if there was no reaction, full dump will be uploaded. They have an unencrypted copy of the data, an unscrambled copy um, that they could read or give to whoever they want. And Oakland doesn't have access to their own files unless they pay up. In a statement, the city of Oakland said, we are dedicated to a thorough analysis to determine what and whose information is potentially involved, which will take time to complete. We are also coordinating this effort with law enforcement, including the FBI. We are asking the business owners and those uh, may have information with the city Please check your bank uh, regularly. Many Oakland businesses are worried about their tax and banking account information being made public. And the cyber attack has made a mess of the city's critical computing infrastructure. Many of our business owners, and they are so worried about, you know, paying their business tax uh, late. Keep backups, because if you do get ransomed, if you do get infected with ransomware, you can restore from the backups um, if you have them. But if you don't have them, then you have to make this choice about whether to pay uh, or whether to lose all your files. Quinton says it is also critical for people to make sure that they update their software regularly and for cities such as Oakland to really invest more in cybersecurity teams. The city has made some exceptions and allowances for the takedown of their system. One example is the business taxes uh, will be extended that deadline from March 1st to April 17th until they are able to get everything back up and running. But certainly this has really been a debilitating blow for the city of Oakland and they're hoping that some of these outside agencies will be able to assist them as they try and move forward. All right, Janet Katsuyama reporting live for us tonight in Oakland. Janet, thank you. Yeah, whoever these fucking people are, they can go fuck themselves if they're like, you're not paying me, so I'm going to release information about the fucking public employees of your city. Right, including their you know, social security, uh, banking information if it's out there you know um not to mention the businesses again small businesses getting screwed um yeah not not too cool guys uh try find someone else to to harass like peter Thiel <laughs> 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 or facebook um but, uh, then that being said um oakland get your shit together because <laughs> well, uh, you should they you, will you, you, yeah, I mean, they, they. this is something or city governments and any government institution really should be on the forefront of security. Um, and I know when I worked in public institutions, it was constant reminders about phishing and uh, scams and, and hacks and, uh, you know, things of this nature. So um, please be mindful. Don't click on that link. 
when in doubt, delete, double delete, spam, block, you know, all those things, all the things. And not for nothing in the first place, not for nothing. I don't know, like why the fuck all this information was basically in one place. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. you would think that a, something like a city would have as part of their cybersecurity plan, have their information, their data segmented. Like have different up, systems having different kinds of data, maybe redundant mm. systems having different kinds of data that only back up, <clears throat> reconcile to each other once a month or something. Like I'm just a dude who has, has some experience working in information technology on like Linux systems. And I can think of a million ways that you could stop. You could make it so that something like this, if it were to happen, would take out some of your data, but not all of it. And it seems like Oakland, it seems like they seems like it was just all in one fucking place they were not prepared so uh again i think another possible career opportunity for you producer dave uh there's market iniquity out there and you, you can fill it <laughs> so anyway let's go yes. ahead and um apparently so there's yeah. some barriers in oakland is that right yeah, so that's the thing. I, I was uh, looking around for stories this week uh, as I was putting, helping put together the docket, and this the headline caught my attention because it it automatically triggered my uh, thought about the story we've been covering in San Francisco with the barricades being put up to prevent Johns and pimps from driving down the street um, in uh, in the mission. And uh, but no, this is actually a story about a similar situation happening in Oakland, and it's not where they work in there either. <laughs> not working so, out so good. Not working out so good. So maybe San Francisco can learn a, few, a thing or two from Oakland. But uh, here's here's the story from ABC Seven. Now Oakland. to an update from the ABC Seven News I team. Now the city of Oakland put up barricades blocking intersections near a grade school in East Oakland, and is following our story, exposing alleged sex workers and trafficking operations that were crowding the area. They're just driving around. They're, they're just driving around, and it's like the barriers are not there for the pimps. Neighbors are calling for a better solution as parents have spotted alleged pimps and Johns moving those barricades right off the street. I-Team reporter Stephanie Sierra is live in the newsroom with the city's response. Steph? Yes, Kristen and Larry, parents and neighbors tell us the area around St. Anthony's School was quiet for the first time in months after these barricades were brought in, but we're told that only lasted three days. Now the city has committed to take further action. She sent me the area where it was moved from. Can you see it? This is Rosa Vargas. We first introduced you to Vargas one month ago as she dropped off her daughter at St. Anthony's School in East Oakland, an area where alleged sex workers and human trafficking operations have been seen loitering outside the K-8 grade school. Following our coverage, the city installed barricades at two nearby intersections around East 15th Street. But Vargas says the pimps are now moving some of the barricades off the street. Then she sent me this one. Parents sent Vargas these photos, pointing out the exact location of where the barricades were moved, some with graffiti on them. She's uh, letting me know with uh, angry faces that cars are can easily drive through there. She says neighbors told her known pimps and johns that frequent the area were spotted doing it. So how did they know that? They started seeing the girls in the corners again. And as of now, it's the gap is still there. This week, the city met with community advocates, police, and city council members to create an enhanced response team dedicated to human trafficking concerns and the crime coming into East Oakland. The barricades are now a main focus. If you live on the street, you can easily navigate to your driveway. But if you're trying to cruise up and down the street, you're from out of the area, it makes it quite difficult. It creates a little bit of a labyrinth for you. Uh, and, and the idea is to make it more difficult for the exploiters, for the for the Johns, the customers. Joe DeVries is Oakland's deputy city administrator leading the effort. Now that word has spread, the barricades are being moved. He says the city may consider making the barriers permanent. I'm not talking about those ugly K-rails. If you look at a a well-designed traffic island or traffic diverter, uh, oftentimes they they incorporate a planter box with some some nice vegetation or some artwork. You know, it has an actual curb. For now, DeVries says the city has committed more enforcement (laughs) from OPD. How long do you think these barricades will be there? 
We don't know. Um, we're going to track the data really carefully over the next couple of months, and then we'll make a month by month decision as to what's the best move. You know who moved it was that? Oh, you see that? Did you see that post office vehicle there? Yeah. The fucking the yeah. mail carrier was like, "Fuck this." Fuck this shit, man. I gotta do my job. Funding for anti-human trafficking outreach. It went from around $950,000 back in 2018 to $4.5 million this year. And we're told part of that will be funding the needs in East Oakland around St. Anthony's School. But the city is also working with the county and the DA to help these women get into diversion programs. For the I-Team, Stephanie Sierra, ABC7 News. What I don't like, and they... <clears throat> they're always doing this. <laughs> they always like, they always try to like basically suggest to you that sex work and human trafficking are like the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're not. Right. No, very they're, different things. <laughs> like there are, there, sure. There is, tra there's trafficking going on in, in sex work, but that's largely a function of sex work being illegal. Right. And then like, because it's all illegal, there's all fucking, there's like a fucking, like a cloak over the whole fucking thing because everybody, nobody's talking, right? Cause it's illegal. It's all, it's all very, very hush hush. And if you're, uh, if you're taking it to the next level and doing some uh, human trafficking, well, that's a good fucking scene to be in for you, I think. But don't worry, producer Dave, um, we're going to have some really nice vegetation and some public art and that's going to solve and everything curb. and a curb, a really well-designed island traffic island um there's nothing i like there's such a public works um and, and, uh, staffers perspective there's nothing like a beautifully designed traffic island just like there's nothing like a beautifully shaved scrotum they're going to um they're gonna like they're gonna gentrify the barriers is what he's saying that's pretty much that's, <laughs> they've already done it they've already done it you can see them out there actually at the the you know, um, refilling the aquifer drainage, you know, uh, vegetation islands. They're out there. They're out there. So it looks like this week San Jose needs to get their shit together. Well, it looks like they might be getting their shit together. That's kind of why I threw this on here. Um, so, uh, uh Monterey road as folks know, we'll, we'll hear more about it is a very major thoroughfare in San Jose. And it's known as San Jose's most deadliest road because it's had the, uh, the, most number of fatality or fatal um, collisions uh, on a regular basis. So apparently they've got a little extra cheese that they can use to um, do a, think about a redesign and, and making the street a little safer. So we're going to learn more from KTVU. Some big changes are coming to one of San Jose's deadliest roads. Hello again, everyone. I'm Julie Haynes. And I'm Mike Meebach. A new grant will help city officials kickstart a redesign project for Monterey Road. This comes after San Jose had a massive spike in the number of traffic accidents and fatalities just last year. New at 11, our South Bay reporter, LaMonica Peters, has more now on the plans moving forward regarding safety improvements. This is a first step. This is going to pay for assessing the feasibility and conceptual designs for Monterey. Monterey Road can be deemed as one of the most dangerous roads in San Jose. In 2021 alone, seven people... Well, that wasn't a function of the road. That was a function of somebody not using the crosswalk. Along the corridor, Correct. <laughs> ...which was originally built as a highway to move traffic across San Jose. Now, with a $2 million grant, Monterey Road will be reimagined as a slower and safer road. So at Branham, Skyway, and Chenoweth, we need to re-engineer those intersections so that people can get safely across them, especially when we introduce things like high-speed rail in the future. Haney says after a call for proposals, the city expects to examine design plans in early 2024. He says the city would like to see protected bike lanes, dedicated transit lanes, and reconstructed intersections. San Jose City Council member Bian Duong... You're getting $2 million, not $2 billion. He knows firsthand right. be realistic Monterey there. Road's deadly yes. history. As a retired fire captain, um, we used to call it the bloody alley. And we have rescue and, and we have seen multiple fatalities um, as pe people speeding down the uh, Monterey Road, we call that now. Bay Area U.S. Representatives Anna Eshu, Zoe Lofgren, and Jimmy Panetta helped to secure the funding from the Department of Transportation's Reconnecting Communities Grant Program. Councilman Duan, who represents the area that includes Monterey Road, says making it safer will benefit the entire community. And I want to make sure that 
we reduce the speed so that way all of us who live in District 7 or even the city of San Jose can feel safe and be, live in a uh, thrivable community and be part of that community. DeWan says Monterey community. is a long oh, and vast you. road and he thinks it may take more than $100 million over several years to completely transform it. LaMonica Peters, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And if, so I think they should go the other way. If people, if it's, if it's like a main thoroughfare, they should maybe turn it into an expressway. Potentially. Um, and you can do that with other infrastructure too that will allow for you know multimodal transportation as well. They've got it on uh, some of our expressways already, but... Um, yeah, there's, it's just, a, it's a very funky street cause it, it, it's, just, it, it doesn't, it re- wouldn't really function that way all the way through town, mostly through the Southern part of town. But once you get into downtown and uh, other areas, um, even closer to like Kurtner and the plant, it gets a little dicey cause there's a lot of, a lot more, uh, re- residential and other types of, uh, you know, small business stuff happening, like right up on the, the road already. So it will take some rethinking, but, um, you know, kudos to them that they've, Two million dollars to to plan. That's really money that they're going to use to plan, right? It's going to pay sa- staff salaries, consultants, and um, that kind of thing. It's not actually going to be used to, you know, create and build the the vegetative traffic islands or whatever, <laughs> whatever they're thinking about in Oakland. Um. Oh God. Oh, do we have to? We're going to go back into time a little bit here for down ballot watch. It looks like, cause there's probably, I, I, I took a look around too. Cause I saw this and I was like, there's gotta be some local politics shit. Nope. Ain't shit. Nothing. No, this not, week. A whole, not a whole lot going on. Um, San Jose city council is brand new and there's a lot of guys, just folk guys literally just learning their, their ropes. Um, so we'll dig into that in the near future. It's really good that we're on Fridays now so we can actually look at what happens on Tuesday at the meetings and maybe bring you some of the juicier bits. Um, but no, we're going to take a step back in time um, because it's it's worth revisiting. There was a story this week um, that really frothed me and a lot of folks up, the, the good wife as well, um, in our, our local scene, as it were, um, in the San Jose Spotlight, which I'll get into a sec- in a second. But I want to take a step back and remind folks of uh, an incident that happened um, you know, around the time of, you know, prior to the pandemic, actually, um, the last time, the, or when a actually right around the time of the pandemic uh, when uh, Mayor Zuck was running for city council and one of his opponents um, who was backed by the lab, you know, local labor groups, Democratic Party, other folks, uh, got herself into a little bit of trouble. Um, and uh, we're going to learn more about, uh, take a step back in time, learn about what happened as a result of that. And then we're going to take a look at her attempt at sort of a rebirth or a rebrand New at 11, a San Jose woman with dreams to run for city council will instead spend six months in jail for crashing her car into a pedestrian, killing him instantly. KPIX finds Maria Medina live in Los Gatos, where that deadly accident happened. Maria? And Alan, the victim's family spoke to me tonight about their loss of a father, a husband, and why they believe justice was not served. To say that we were disappointed is an understatement. Today, Bridget Starkey sat in the same courtroom as Jennifer Higgins Bradanini, the woman who killed Bridget's father, Tim, in 2019, days before Christmas. You see the woman who killed my father in person is very jarring. But Bradanini, a former San Jose City Council candidate and president of the Women's March Bay Area, will not serve a sentence to the original charge of felony vehicular manslaughter. Instead, a judge agreed to reduce the charge to misdemeanor gross negligence. It was a shock, a shock to all of us. What she took from us is immeasurable and my dad's loss will remain forever. Tim Starkey was standing near his truck in Las Gatis on Blossom Hill Road. He was just about to help put up a friend's Christmas lights when Brad and Nini crossed over a bike lane and onto the shoulder, slamming into Tim. Police say Brad and Nini was under the influence of prescription pills used for anxiety and depression. She said she didn't have an explanation for what happened. Uh, that it wasn't intentional. And Attorney it, Timothy it Lundell tragedy. knew Tim Starkey for nearly four decades. It was a life taken away that had so much promise, love, <laughs> tenderness, fun, all the things that any family would want in a husband and dad. 
uh, gone in an instant. My dad was just a lover of music and cooking for people. And, Despite the heartache, uh, Bridget says she respects the remorse Brad Anini showed today in court. It's what her dad, who taught her to live with integrity, would want from her. Bridget, what would your dad say to you today? I think that he'd be very proud for standing up, sticking up for him and defending his, his character in front of the judge, in front of the woman who killed him. I like how and Becky isn't fucking around and being like, that's the woman who killed him. Family says they were just trying to get through sentencing, but they will explore future options, uh, legal options against Brad and Nini. I also reached out to Brad and Nini's lawyer, but have not heard back yet. Live in Las Gatas, Maria Medina, KPI X5. So uh, that, that was the, I, I believe we covered at the time that the, the story too. And I think I had some kind of live, laugh, love joke back then that I can't quite remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it was the, the story itself. I mean, yeah, the, it's tragic. It's absolutely tragic what happened. And, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, me, I'm willing to forgive and, uh, and um, understand and to sympathize. Um, especially when, you know, someone is genuinely remorseful and yeah, I, 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 I'm sure that the judge, the judge obviously saw it that way because uh, the charges were reduced to the point where, um, by the way, she was sentenced to six months. She actually ended up serving three months, basically house arrest with an ankle bracelet. Um, so she never actually did any jail time at all. And meanwhile, this guy is gone, right? Uh, and this father and fam family member is gone. Um, so, and it was very much her fault. <laughs> uh, there's really no question if ands or buts about it. And, uh, in the wake of this, as she, you know, she went and served her sentence and she stepped back from the women's March and she stepped back from other organizations that she was, you know, a player in, um, she was an up and coming, you know, um, uh, activist in the democratic party, um, and a leader in the local, um, you know, community, uh, in a lot of local community movements and yeah, a potential leader down the road one day. Um, and, uh, as she emerged from, this sort of what she calls her very dark place um she began to reinsert herself or reassert herself and uh we and folks are letting her do it um the folks in you know democratic party and other circles that the good wife and i play in um have sort of just let her walk right back in and and take the lead on uh on things and be the front and center not just take the lead on things but be a front and center voice for their organizations and on certain on events and she's now uh as we find out from this story in San Jose Spotlight, unfortunately, there's no video, um, but a story that was absolutely pitched by her to rebrand herself. She's now the executive director of a nonprofit on the peninsula. Um, she's doing very well for herself. Um, and she is, but she's racked, she says, with this survivor's guilt. And she's, she's with survivor's traumatized. Guilt? Yes, right. Are you, are you fucking it. kidding me? I'm not read Sur if you, survivors. If you survivor, down, sorry, I almost I almost government named you there, Councilman. Survivor's guilt is if you and I are in a car accident and I die I, and you survive, right? And, and maybe, we're and we're buddies, right? And maybe the car accident wasn't either of our fault. The, you know, somebody right. t-boned a car, the car we were right. in, and right. the one who survives is going to feel guilty. Survivor's guilt isn't. <clears throat> I killed somebody <laughs> and I, and I lived right. I mean, no, it's, I mean you have to laugh. Otherwise you just start throwing things, right? Like, 100%, the, the, and it's a really uh, a morbid uh, analogy, but the one I came up with when I was talking about this with a good wife was, um, you know, you and I were best buds. We worked at a accounting firm in the South tower on nine 11. Right. And I got out and you didn't. Right. Um, that's survived. And I would have survivors that survivors guilt. It's not, it's not this. So, it's it's really i really don't recommend anyone reading this story i shouldn't have read it in the first place because it's the most sanctimonious just bullshit piece of claptrap ever i can't believe they even published it because this person is just so obviously self uh aggrandizing and self-serving to the point where like it's it's the hypocrisy runs so deep in this story she's saying you know oh yeah I, uh, the grief that these people this family is going through is immeasurable and i can't understand you know blah 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 and i've um you know, I've reached out to let them know that I'm, you know, I want to help them in their, <laughs> in their grief. And meanwhile, this story itself is like re-traumatizing those people, right? And the victim and everyone else involved in it, um, all to help her rebrand herself and help her reassert herself as a player. And I, I just can't wait for the, 
you know, because this is just how San Jose, how sick and provincial San Jose is. I can't wait for this woman to try to run for office again, like school board or city council, right? There's a city council race coming up in district 10 this next year. I, I, I wouldn't at all be shocked if she tried to run for it. Um, because one people's bloody political memory in this town is just non-existent. Um, their memory in general is just non-existent. And two, we just let, and to be fair, the, the daughter of the slain man, you know, another nice looking blonde lady. Right. But, um, we let these blonde white soccer moms from Almaden literally get away with murder. Right. It, it, it's, it's unreal. It's, I, I don't really keep it. It's beyond well, me. Be, that they're be li- at least like the murder, murder is intent. So, uh, when I, right. you know, she was manslaughter, she was, she was high as, high as fuck on benzodiazepine. Um, and like, Right. probably in some kind of like disassociative state maybe she took too much maybe she fair, was fair point maybe she was doing a, a jordan peterson where she was uh, doctor shopping to get the dose uh, dosage up you know but we'll never know any of that because her medical records are private and, and i get apparently none of that came out during the trial again possibly because of her privilege um, well and because she said she pretty much settled in a way right she pled no contest um so there really wasn't much of a trial there were the, it was really just um uh, sentencing uh, well i mean that maybe she didn't want to be subject to discovery and stuff so oh i i wouldn't have either. yeah I, I i that's exactly what i would have done what she did is exactly what i would have done is plead no contest and just get out of it get with this you know get to get but it was pretty much a big slap on the wrist is what she got so anyway this is just i i don't know if this will there'll be video and we can get into this more later but i do encourage you or I guess I don't encourage you to read the story unless you want to get really upset, <laughs> but, but it's just, it's just, it's just another example. And I, uh, you know, it's fine to make an example out of this person, but it's just another example of San Jose's uh, provinciality when it comes to politics. And, and I, I would, like I said, I would not at all be surprised if this person didn't try to reinvent themselves and, and reestablish themselves as a political candidate. I don't think they'll win. I don't think she'll win anything, but a lot of people will get behind her. A lot of people will put their name behind her. A lot of people will put their money behind her. And to me, be tainted by this entire situation. Um, and people will recall when this happened, she continued her campaign. She like paused her. She, I, I'm going to pause my campaign. She took a pause for a few days and, but she continued and, and saw, you know, she didn't win, um, didn't get past the primary, but she continued her campaign. She didn't like take a step back and just say, look, I gotta, I gotta reflect. So, she's never really done a lot of honest self-reflection. So I can't buy this story now just because, Oh, it's a couple years later and she's suddenly, you know, feeling was, bad and wanting to, I was skimming the article a little bit. She's like, I didn't reach out to the family, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no shit. They're going to sue you, dude. Right. <laughs> like you're like, right. yeah, your lawyer is like, do not contact do them. Not. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, I don't know if her attorney even advised her on doing this story to begin with her. Or, or, um, and this is another thing. It's like, I, I know that she pitched this because, you know, a reasonable person, you know, it's a, a report, even if a reporter was like, Hey, let's do a, you know, let's find out what's going on with that woman who killed the guy. Right. <laughs> um, you know, and they do a follow up story, a reasonable person who has respect for that family and not doesn't want to re-traumatize everyone and is legitimately feeling trauma themselves. There's no way they agree to interview for this story. Right. Or they, they politely decline and just say, or, look, I'm just not interested. Or they don't write story. the story. They don't put that picture of her in that like nice off. You know what I'm saying? Like they mm-hmm. could have, you could have done a follow up on this in a responsible way and been like, sure. and not included her in it in, except for you contact her and ask her the questions you want to answer. You want yeah. answers to, and don't print any of her spin. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that, th- uh, that was just my, my a little rant from the councilman this week, since we had uh, a dearth of local uh, politics to cover. Although that story up in San Francisco about the, whether or not to prosecute the police officer uh, is just going back and forth in a lovely way that even involved Chesa Boudin getting quoted in a story this week. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one as it progresses, but there wasn't enough news there to really make it worthwhile. So and we'll anyway, keep, we'll keep an eye on this and I may actually, I've been writing more for the defamation times lately and I've been, uh, Leaving, leaving a trail of uh, leaving leaving a trail of very hurt feelings in my wake, and I might I might I might try to hurt Scorched I might try to hurt some feelings over there at the San Jose Spotlight in my next piece. I already kind of know what I already kind of know what what I already kind of know what I might be doing here if I write about this because I just skimmed that article and I see what you saw too, where it was like 
It wasn't like, oh, this person, you know, you could say, you could say, oh, this person did their time and now they're out and working. But like the, just that, just the, just the, the poll quotes that they used of her. It's just like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Get the, the fuck out of here with your, oh, I feel such, get the fuck out of here. Right. I have this new job and I'm, I have a reason to get up every morning to go and help people. <laughs> I feel like I found my calling through this experience. Get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I had my biases about, uh, spotlight when it launched. Um, my biases were, you know, I didn't, I didn't really air them out too much because my biases were actually because the reporter worked for a competing entity that struggled to even get a two nickels to rub together as she was doing some of the best investigative work in the fucking Bay area. And then yeah. other people would fucking steal her, steal her reporting and then put it in the Chronicle and not credit her. And then here comes the spotlight, probably funded by some venture capital or some shit. And, uh, like they're fucking take They took basically all the, all the wind out of it. And uh, the Metro that's been reporting on San Jose for fucking uh, the whole time I've known of San Jose, you know, now that they're, they're like struggling. They, they don't, they can't get funding and they don't run, they don't run bullshit pieces like this. Yeah. It's, it's a blessing and a curse, right? There's someone like for me, it's like, there's someone covering city hall. Great. Um, but how are they covering it? Right. And are they doing a, a good, are they doing an adequate job? Are they doing, are they doing their job as journalists? And, um, you know, that you can question spotlight, right? I, I think that, um, there's some, I think there's some good intention there, but if you look at like their board of directors, you look at, right. You said that you can't find out that people are funding them because they're actually a nonprofit. So, um, we can't necessarily find out who those donors are. Um, but if you just look at their board of directors, right, they do stories that are, um, you know, very, very much about branding a lot of these folks all the time. Right. And just because they, in a little note at the end of the story in italics, you know, note that this person serves on their board of directors or whatever. Um, it doesn't make it right. Right. Well, and uh, I think that shit needs to be in the headline. Yeah, <laughs> like, very, right. They're, or, or at least right below in the byline. Right. And this, this, this is very self-serving stuff that they do a lot of the times. And this itself is also that too, right? Like they, it's, um, they were absolutely happy to jump on this story and to, to, to jump down the throat of this story. If, if, um, you know, Jenny reached out to them. I don't know, um, but they were absolutely happy to to further this narrative and to continue to to take on this story and to allow this person to re-victimize her victims um, and to re-traumatize everyone involved in in the situation um, and just to get clicks. You know, I read that like the the reporter or whoever the person who wrote this wrote this article reached out to the victim's family. It's like leave them. You, you could do this without them. You can right. do whatever they this, but you, you don't need them for your fucking puff piece. Yeah. Well, that's, if anything, that's how you know that she pitched the story because they wanted to be quote unquote fair and balanced, right? And reach out to, and get, offer them a chance to, to say something. Not at all surprised that they didn't, right? That's exactly how she, she should have responded if someone reached out to her to talk about this um, again. Like, she's shut up. <laughs> Even if it's not a legal thing, just have some humility, have some grace and just step back and, and i believe don't even, in the work you're doing at the nonprofit. maybe you shouldn't yeah. tar and feather the nonprofit with with all of this bubbling back up to the surface as you're working there and in some yeah. kind of important role because now yeah. like if if this becomes if if like for whatever reason this people start to get kind of pissed off about this because this is like in the wake of the elizabeth holmes trial and stuff right and i'm not saying that these are the same like elizabeth i don't know some people fuck got faulty results and shit might have died because of elizabeth holmes too but but she did steal money from Henry Kissinger. So Elizabeth Holmes, probably a better person than this lady. This yeah. lady didn't steal no money from Henry Kissinger before yeah. she ran her car into that person. Um, right. Who did I say? Ouch. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but yeah, this is terrible. This is fucking gross. And the fucking, the rest of the people at this nonprofit should be fucking livid that she decided to put herself uh, in, in the, in the local media like this. If they're indeed doing good work there. Well, if they're, if they're doing their research, they would know about this stuff already. And like, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it just seems like there are a lot of folks enabling her and enabling people like this all the time. Like people failing up as the good wife likes to say, um, all the time this happens in Silicon Valley. So it, one, it's great to see things like Silicon Valley bank fall apart because that's a lot of, a lot of people that work there. I knew her failing up. Um, but it's just, it's just consistently this happens over and over again. I shudder to think if this woman were black or, you know, um, uh, uh, not pretty, you know, not pretty, right? Um, God knows, right? Um, well, how folks would, would would she be allowed to reinvent herself this way? I shudder to think, and probably think no. 
But I'm a cynic, producer Dave. And speaking of which, um, since we didn't have down ballot watch uh, in t- or a lot of f- a lot for down ballot watch, I thought we'd we'd do a little Tesla watch. <laughs> so here's a follow up. This isn't funny, right? This is this is a no. terrible story. But here's a follow up from a story we covered last week. Um, not great. New at noon, we learned today a Tesla that crashed into a fire truck in the East Bay last month was on self-driving mode. The crash happened February 18th while fire crews were on the scene of a previous accident on northbound Interstate 680 in Walnut Creek. The driver of the Tesla was killed. A passenger was injured. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said today it sent a special crash investigation team to look at the accident. It's part of a larger investigation by the agency into multiple instances of Teslas on autopilot crashing into parked emergency vehicles like okay so uh, the the problem is with the marketing right elon mm-hmm. musk being elon musk just tells a bunch of lies all the time right mm-hmm. and he's like oh these are these are self-driving this is a autopilot mode or whatever but also like i think it's your responsibility as the driver of this car to like be a little bit skeptical of that claim and uh maybe not just assume that the car is going to drive itself. Um, anybody out there who has a car with all these advanced driver assist systems, please fucking pay attention. Please keep your hands on the fucking wheel and your eyes on the fucking road. Even if you have these things turned on, these are Mm -hmm. not perfect. You're not a perfect driver either. So like the, the combination of this thing being imperfect and all of us being imperfect as drivers or operators of motor vehicles means you should pay attention just like if it, well, that shit wasn't turned on. Maybe you should pay even closer attention because you're beta testing some shit. Like, honestly. Right. like Yeah, shit, shit could turn into Ed 209 in a second, right? In a heartbeat. So, um, yeah, watch out. And you're not dealing with a situation where everyone's driving Ed 209, right? Like, uh, some, some humans are driving their own car with just human, you know, uh, uh, senses and capabilities right and then you're driving the enhanced car but you know you still have to interact with those humans so you're right absolutely pay the fuck attention and in this, this case not, i mean this it, hit a, pass. it hit a parked vehicle it hit a parked emergency vehicle i don't know i feel like i feel like your car is not doing any driver assist at all if it doesn't fucking slam on the brakes to avoid a fucking fire engine my god like right like even if you're trying to drive into the fire engine, if the car has got these capabilities, it should prevent you from like fucking doing that. You know what I'm saying? That'd be, that'd be, that'd be wise, I would say. I mean, that's a pretty large obstruction, so that it wouldn't sense that is pretty With flashing famous. lights. You can see that shit from hell far right. away. <laughs> like, right. like that's my, why I, the flashing bright lights are there. Actually, is so that you could see it from far away and fuck <laughs> t- 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 and take. A, like start to oh you like a bunch of flashing lights in front of me nobody else is slowing down fuck that. i'm gonna slow down maybe but the people to, behind to your, me will slow down um to your point though uh about you know you never know when things are going to go haywire you know even some simple stuff like bad baby has this toy it's a crab right and it uh it you know goes back and forth like this right then 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 with a little music playing and it's got sensors that um allow it to you know bounce off the wall and, and walk around basically kind of like a uh you know one of the roombas right um and of course like within five seconds of this thing running around our house it's broken right and the sensors are not working and it's just like hitting the wall over and over again like eh, 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 that's eh, pretty funny I can't actually get the wall, right <laughs> it's hilarious it's playing this little music but that's because it's thing. not a, a, a fucking ma- it's not because it's because it's not a motor vehicle that's the reason that's funny right like if it were a motor right, vehicle exactly. this would be terrible exactly terrifying. right so <laughs> like just just be be aware right even the tiniest you know that that this that, that that made me think of this instantly was <laughs> well the sensors broke on that thing and five seconds so who's to say that this new technology you know in a car is really working all that well anyway looks like um you know the teslas are running into trucks so the trees have decided to take it out on the teslas and get back at the teslas on behalf of their friends the trucks i like so, this here's... fucking tree crashes into tesla in san mateo county right? fucking, uh, fucking, in... fucking critical support to whoever wrote this youtube video <laughs> title here <laughs> i wish it would have said self driving tree Some crashes driving tree. into tesla <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see what let's see what happened with that tesla ver- or tree versus tesla 
Let's do it. The Bay Area. And Pam, one of them on the peninsula, a tree crashed down onto a car oh on my. Skyline Boulevard in the hills above Portola Valley. One person was treated at a hospital. Now, two people were inside that Tesla when the tree fell. The injured person was treated for leg injuries. When the tree fell down, it blocked <sighs> all the lanes of Skyline Boulevard. And in- that's a that's a nice that's a cool stretch of road that that happened on but it's a dangerous For stretch sure. of road especially in like the rain and snow right now do you think this story would have been a story if it had not been a tesla if it, the tree had fallen on a toyota or a a ford or a hyundai no but i i just again a critical support to whoever wrote that youtube video title that yes. was great tree <laughs> tree crashes into tesla <laughs> like i love it because the tree like you're right like the tree actively drove into the tesla Anyway, all right, well, um, that's Tesla Watch for this week in, in the absence of a real serious Down Ballot Watch. Um, but we'll, we're going to come back with a vengeance next week on Down Ballot Watch, I guarantee it, for St. Patrick's Day. All right, well, um, we have one more thing for you here, and we don't have to watch the whole clip, but um, we love to do animal and or human interest on another thing every week here on Down Ballot, and this week it's animal interest. And um, we could have done any number of stories about the great atmospheric river that's hitting us and the, the hail that everyone might have uh, experienced in San Jose and the surrounding environs. Um, but we didn't. But there, there is one story that caught caught my eye and uh, it's just super cute. So let's watch this. There's a, Briefly. There's a duck swimming on the freeway. Fucking ducks on the freeway. The latest. James? Sal, good morning to you. Well, as you mentioned, this area has been closed since about 3 o'clock this morning. Another chunk of 580 closed even sooner before that, all thanks to that rain that was coming down, causing some of the flooding. You're looking westbound right now, so if you were headed from places like Hayward up to Oakland, this is the lane you'd be driving in. And uh, as you can see, the flooding hasn't really changed much since we've talked about it all morning long here. What has changed, and I think because uh, we know that this is going to last, and be like this for a while. We have ducks now on the water, on the flood here on the westbound side of the highway. On the eastbound side, we're starting to make a good amount of progress here. We just spoke to uh, some folks from the California Highway Patrol as well as Caltrain. Uh, How Caltrain. those ducks bite the people uh, that are trying to get rid of the water? Are having conversations <laughs> now on what it may this look is my like home now. Fuck you. First and second <laughs> on the eastbound side, the eastbound no ducks. Way of the highway. So again, that's if you're going from Oakland down over to Hayward and toward the South Bay here. There's lots of options for alternatives, although now that we're getting closer to that peak commute time those places are starting to get a little bit more backed up here so at the very least give yourself plenty of extra time but when it comes to what actually happened here we haven't really gotten that much rain since 3 a.m this morning so why did this flooding all uh kind of stick around for as long as it has well i spoke to uh, caltrans a little bit about that earlier this morning Right now, crews and our contractors are working at pumping out that water uh, and also trying to figure out what went wrong at that pump house. And so right now, we're, we're working on clearing that water up. We're working to making sure that there is no safety hazards on the road. Again, Caltrans' top priority is safety. So we're talking about two to three feet of water still standing on the highway here. Again, that eastbound side looks a lot better than it did just a few hours ago. So Caltrans and CHP are considering reopening that one or two lanes up in probably Ugh. the next hour or so. As far as the, the ducks should get the fuck the out of there, actually. Directions, right. Caltrans it tells looks me like they stagnant water. It's pretty nasty. To have it open by about noon today. On, so pretty much the remainder <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're of the food. rest of this morning here. If 580 is part of your normal Old morning Cheetos. commute. Okay. It is not going to be today. You definitely want to make sure you take pretty much any other freeway. You do have options. 880 if you're coming off the Bay Bridge. 680 if you're coming from Walnut Creek, Concord, Lafayette, that area. You can also take 24 to 13. 13 reconnects uh, down to 580 in an area that's already back open. You just use so, the map app again, on your phone. You have the options, but you're certainly going to need to expect some delays <laughs> as well. Ways. Just watch a Tesla just come Flores, fucking KTQ. careening into the water in the background. <laughs> <laughs> or out of the water for that matter. And fucking fun. nobody's even in it. <laughs> it's just trying to. It's it takes just, out the just, poor just, reporter. It comes in and takes out the ducks for or something. Oh, the poor ducks. Anyway, well, um, I hope the ducks found found their way home. But uh, they were obviously very confused, um, landing on the freeway in the water. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, be be kind to your ducks. They're your friend. Man, did we learn anything this week? I'm I'm. I'm fucking like searching. I think I don't think we learned anything this week. Like as far as morals. Well, no. I mean, come on. 
No, yeah, probably not. We're not doing um, that around here. But um, I, I mean, I I learned that. Yeah, no, I don't. I didn't really learn anything. I learned that if you are a business, um, don't keep all your money in one bank. Uh, That's especially a not a bank where a lot of venture capitalists have their money. Um, bad idea. Just use like a regular, like a Chase. I know they're not the greatest people, but they're um, you know, none of this. You know, they're thinking. Even during the last financial crisis, you didn't hear much about Chase. You know, I. I learned that if you, if you really want to stop a pimp, some good vegetation is the way to go. That's right. That's right. You need to gentrify your barriers and you need yeah. to uh, pay attention when you're driving, even if you think the car's driving itself, because it, it might I do agree. a dumb thing like crash into like something that's hiding like an emergency vehicle with its lights <laughs> on <laughs> in the middle of the road. Um, Yes. So, uh, would you like to read us out this week, producer Dave? Yeah, I haven't read out Down Ballot when you've been here in a while. This has been our local news show. It's Down Ballot. We're live now every Friday at seven thirty p.m. Pacific. Um, fans of local love, kind of hang out. We're retooling that. Going to be posting some classic episodes to the podcast feed while we get that rocking mm. and rolling. Um, and once we get everything ready for that, we're probably going to have a new logo and just a whole like kind of rebrand for local love. And uh, we've already got some interest. We're going to start recording and putting out episodes of the the new format in April. That's the next month, April. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, just make sure you're following us on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. Check out our other podcasts. Um, and the one that's not live, and I probably never mention anywhere, is How the Tech Are You? That's uh, me and uh, Matt and uh, HK's show. That is not live um, because we're not doing it live. Uh, you might want to check out the last episode specifically because a cat fell on my head during it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, give us money. Uh, you can do that at patreon.com slash Echoplex, or we have uh, Venmo. You can give us money through Streamlabs. Just go to the support page on echoplexmedia.com. Uh, also, that swag shop. My God, there's just so much good stuff in there. Those live, laugh, love, I live, laugh, Lucifer items are for if you're basic and worship the Dark Lord. Other than that, hang out if you're watching live. Um, we're going to move on into conspiracy bingo. After I take a short break, we'll rock, a, we'll rock, a this locals by audible smoke signal and probably another song or two while I, uh, slowly change the color of the lights in the studio and possibly the contents of my drink, though I may wait till 10 or so this evening to do that. Councilman, as always, thank you for joining me this week. See you next week for the show. And I got to get you live in studio one Friday night for the show. We'll figure out when and how to do I'll that. Bring, I'll bring the baby. Oh, no, that's what I... No, 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 no. She's very opinionated. I know, I know. Don't... I, I know, I know. I, I had the cat try to host the other night. I don't need a baby trying to host, too. Anyway, this has been <laughs> Down Ballot. Thank you so much, everybody. This Audible Smoke Signal song is called Locals. And uh, put the auto DJ on for a little bit. And we'll be right back with uh, Conspiracy Bingo. <laughs> It's running out, I think it's time to get the party started Pick up my phone, go to check and see who's calling Dress up real nice for the ladies at the bar And I'm driving in my car just to get to where they are Here at the local scene is where I plant my feet It's where I smoke my cigarette and I hold my drink I look at all my friends, they're all blazing green Sit at the front of the stage waiting for MTV Where are those guys who's standing next to me With the pipe in his hand ready to blaze for me About five minutes later we're all singing We let get the fuck up on stage and rock the scene Yeah, we do what we want and what we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. We do what we want. What we wanna do. And what we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy the band. I turn and head back to the bar for a refill, man, because you know where we are. We're headed out to the car to smoke another one what? and another one. Woo! Now, just when the magic starts kicking in, now here we left playing, and you know it's time to head in. All right, everybody, now it's time to grab a new drink, spark it if you got it, and then pass it to me. Yeah. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. We 
do what we want. What we want to do, what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy the band. Last up on the field for the show tonight. It's down and dirty and vibes overheaded outside. The spark up another joint. Now who's got my light? A stoner E, of course. Shouldn't you be inside? I'm all up in this bitch being who I gotta be. I'm fucked up like the US economy. The truth is, is that I don't think logically. Stoner E, take you on a psychedelic odyssey. Now inside, motherfuckers is rocking me. And outside, shit, we smoke a lot of broccoli. Rocky the roller, you're the sexy girl, be jockin' me. Ain't too drunk to fuck, but I'll probably do a slap of it. We do what we want. And what we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. We do what we want, what we want to do, and what we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. Sit back and enjoy